On behalf of Alpha Omega Product Development Systems, in this video, I would like to take a few minutes to present adaptive mesh method in multi-phase flow simulation using ANSYS Fluent. I'm going to simulate the dam break example, which is a classical benchmark problem. There is a water column in a tank containing air. The water column is suddenly released and therefore falls down due to the gravity and we are interested to track the air-water interface over a certain time. With this advanced meshing technique, it is possible to dynamically refine the mesh only close to the area of interest and keep the mesh to be coarse elsewhere, resulting in a significant reduction in computational time. This animation of the results shows the transient behavior of air-water interface and clearly shows you how the meshes are only refined near the interface using adaptive mesh. In particular, in multi-phase flows where the position of interface during the computations is unknown beforehand, this adaptive meshing is very exciting. So let me start with fluent meshing. I'm going to launch fluent in meshing mode with appropriate settings. Takes couple of seconds to launch. I'm going to use watertight geometry workflow and import my geometry. This is the CAD geometry that I previously created in space plane. A very simple tank with a small obstacle on the bottom. Proper names were assigned to the walls. Go back to fluent meshing. The geometry is imported. Using the clipping plane, we can better visualize the CAD model. I would like to apply local sizing to the obstacle. Let's say 2.5 millimeter for the target mesh size. Next, assigning minimum and maximum global sizing for the surface mesh. I'm going to slightly reduce the curvature normal angle to have a better resolution near the curved region. This geometry consists of only fluid regions with no voids. Boundaries, name and type looks good. Only one fluid region. For the prism layers, let's keep the default settings using smooth transition with three number of boundary layers. And I'm going to use polyhex core to generate the volume mesh. Polyhex core is kind of new meshing type that is available in Fluent Meshing 2020 R1, which can reduce the total number of cells as compared to other mesh types such as TET mesh. It normally takes time for the volume mesh to be created. My mesh generation is completed in less than a minute. It is seen that there are hex mesh in the core region with those nice transition from the refined prism layers. It is also clear that the surfaces are filled with poly mesh. We can inspect the mesh from different views. You may change the clipping plane for better inspection. Minimum orthogonal quality is 0.31, which is good to proceed to the solution. There is an option on the top right corner, switch to solution, where the user can directly go from meshing to solution mode in a single window task in Fluent, 
makes the workflow to be very convenient. It takes a couple of seconds to switch. All right, we are in Fluent now to set up our model. I'm applying gravity. It's going to be transient simulation, pressure base, and absolute velocity. For the material, I would like to add water from the Fluent database. So I have both water and air under the material now. Then let's choose multi-phase and select volume of fluid model and enable implicit body force. Once you hit apply, then the other sub-windows will be activated. For the phases, let's assign suitable name for primary and secondary phases. My primary phase is water and the secondary phase is air. Apply. Then, for the phase interaction, let's assign a constant surface tension and enable surface tension force. Everything looks good. Apply. No hidden mass transfer is needed for this case. For the viscose model, I'm going to select the SSDK Omega Turbulence Modeling. Let's check the operating conditions. The operating pressure is the absolute atmospheric pressure and operating density is already set to the minimum phase average, which looks good. I'm going to initialize the domain and fill the entire domain with air. So I'm assigning 1 to the air volume fraction. Initialize. Next, we should make an initial water column. To do that, under the domain tab, go to adapt. On cell registers, I'm going to make a new region. Here, in the Region Register window, I need to put the coordinates of the region that I want to be filled with water. Save and Display will show you the assigned region right away. Then, under Solution, Patch, we are going to set the air fraction to be zero for the specified region. To confirm that, it's always a good idea to make a contour of phase fractions. So I'm making a new contour with appropriate name. Let's choose all the surfaces and select contours of phases. So here you can see that the assigned water region looks good, which is shown as the red region. I'm going to make a better picture to track the air-water interface during the calculation. So I'm creating a nice surface of water phase fraction with the IZ value of 0 in Floyd zone. I would like to also see the surfaces of my tank. So go to Mesh, New, and select the faces of the tank. I can also make a contour of the surface that I already created. I don't need to have the color map. 
and eventually using scene option we can combine those features together by applying a transparency to the tank walls like this so everything now is all set and it's ready to start the standard calculation but again we would like to employ adaptive mesh in order to do that we can go to adapt refine Corson. this window will then pop up under the predefined criteria i'm gonna select multi-phase then volume of flight next i'm enabling the dynamic adaption you need to sit the frequency for which period this dynamic adaption needs to be applied. Let's do that for every 10 time steps. Once we are done with that settings, under cell registers, we are able to change those default settings for the refinement and coarsen criteria. As you can see, it's using gradient of phase volume fraction for the refinement using cells having more than 0 0.06. Also for the coarsen, similar criteria and cells having less than 0 0.05 was applied. We can also observe the assigned regions. This is for the coarsening region. Let's also take a look at the regions for the refinement. There are a couple of options you may play with if you're interested. Finally, let's go to Run Calculation tab. I'd prefer to select Adaptive Type for Time Advancement with Multiphase Specific Method. Let's set the total flow time 2 seconds. And Global Current Number of 2 also sounds reasonable. Let's Keep other settings to be as a default values. And I'm not going to change the scale residuals values. For the transient simulation, it would be great to monitor the simulation by creating the solution animation. In order to do so, you may go to solution under activities tab, create solution animation. Let's record for every 1 milliseconds of flow time. Select scene for animation object and use the active window. We are all set now. By clicking calculate, the simulation will be started and you can track the scale residuals. This is going to take a long time for the solution to be completed. So, I'm not going to wait here for sure, since I have the simulation results, for the sake of demonstrations here, I'm showing you the animation of the ISO surface of the completed results. The water column falls down and hit the obstacle, and it's clearly seen that the dynamic mesh adaption is successfully applied and captured the interface very well. Again, the main benefit of this method is that we don't need to generate initial fine mesh as normally required for any accurate CFD simulation. So we can generate relatively coarse mesh and allow the fluent to only refine the mesh near the desired region in the computational domain. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe our YouTube channel. For any questions, feel free to reach out to Alpha Omega email address. Thank you.